Hello everybody, welcome back to Pow Bam Zing. My name is Carl and today we're doing something that I think is kind of fun. Using this Raspberry Pi 3 here, we are going to be building an entertainment box of sorts. Using this screen that was donated to me. It's a little bit of an older screen, but it's vase mount compatible and will work perfectly fine with our application that we're using it for today. And I also have this large plank of wood with some of the cuts already drawn out and measured. So now all that's left to do is the work and hopefully I don't mess anything up. All right, so we're out here in the garage, our very messy garage, mind you, but that's okay because this isn't a channel about garages. And instead of a proper workbench, I'm cutting it on our deep freezer turned workbench. So here we go, come on in closer. So if you look, at first glance, you're just building a box. So you think, oh, well, I'll cut all the pieces the same sizes. Well, you're not really building a box, and you can't think about it because it's not on a 2D plane. So some of the pieces of wood have to be shorter than the other pieces, and you have to make account for how you're going to put it together. But let's just start making the cuts right now, and we'll explain it as the time goes on. Oh, and another thing. It's always when you're cutting and stuff like this, proper to tell you guys to wear hearing protection and eye protection while you do this. Although I'm not gonna be wearing the hearing protection because that's going to be for my wife, the camera lady. Okay, so I'm a little sweaty, but this goes on the list of things that we never ever tell my wife. While cutting, I may have sawed through the freezer a little bit by accident. It's okay. It's not gonna hurt anything. Except for me, maybe. Okay, so now that I got all the wood cut and separated and all that kind of stuff, I even sanded it down a little bit to take the edge off. It still looks pretty bad, and this is all like uh, particle board. It's not really particle board, but it's, it's like it. It's plywood, so it's got these layers in it, and it doesn't look great, but at the end of the day, I'm just more concerned about its functionality, but we're going to glue the sides of them together like this. And then this one is going to go on it like that. And then while it's on it, we are going to take the nail gun here and shoot it in through the side of this one. I, I, I don't have three hands, but you get the idea. It'll be good. Okay, so I'm sorry for the noise of the fan, but it's Florida and it's really hot. So I have to have the fan out here blowing on me or else I shall surely die. But let me show you what I've done so far. Okay, so as you can see, I've made the outer frame here and that was originally going to be my only plan. But as I found out after gluing and um, nailing these uh, pieces on the outer frame together, I realized that if I were to like put a handle on top and pick it up, the frame itself was too flimsy to, um, to, to hold a TV and all the components inside. So I added, I cut, these two uh, two by four scrap pieces which I had lying around um, and added them as support beams and it's kind of ugly but it's not super bad but these nails in here I nailed three in here I nailed three in the side and so these are making it much more much more rigid and there's not really any flex anywhere so these aren't glued in I didn't glue these in I just kind of added these as a support structure um, but it, it, it should work a whole lot better like that now. I didn't even really sand any of this here down here because the screen, the monitor is going to be, uh, the monitor is sitting in its baby cradle thing over there, but the monitor is going to be right here and you shouldn't really even see any of that. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm currently tapping the uh, crossbar for my uh, wooden box over here um, to fit the Raspberry Pi um, standoffs I'm going to put on here and it's actually pretty cool this is the first time I've really tried this by myself so come on over here closer and according to the instructions what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to turn it not fast but slowly and then quarter turn back to clear the threads and essentially what I'm doing is creating threads for computer standoffs that I'm going to screw in to this piece of metal pretty cool. I really hope that it turns out, I really hope that it turns out well. We will see. Okay, so I've completed the, here, come here, come here. Oh. 
it's my box. Okay, look, so I've completed the majority of my box. All that's really left to do now is install it. As you can see, the, the uh, door is back Amazing. here. Um, the two base mount holes are right here, and we're going to have to put the TV in from the front. Now, because of these pillars here that I added for stability, I had to put the VGA cord on first because of where it's located. So, hey Titus, can you get down for a second so I can put my TV together? Is that okay? Are you gonna be good? Okay, here we go. Thank you. Okay, so I've got the TV mounted in the front, but I still have to put the base of screws in the back. So I went to my local Lowe's or Home Depot or wherever, and I picked up some, uh, they are M.2 or something like that screws, I believe. I can't remember exactly what metric uh, thread size they are. That one's going in there. Should have probably left it a little loose so I could get to this one if necessary, but that one looks like it's lining up perfectly. And this one will go in here. Okay, so now that the TV is secured inside its mount, I know I didn't get all four VESA holes, but the uh, TV is pretty snug in here, so I don't think it's, at least it's not gonna fall out anywhere. Now, remember the standoffs that I was talking about that I was threading for? Well, I already put the standoffs in and they were just a little bit too far apart, but if I loosen up the screws on the Raspberry Pi enough, they do reach. So I'm going to maybe cross thread them a little bit, not too, like not actually cross thread them, but loosely screw them in so they'll work. I'm gonna take this out. That's right, out. I'm gonna put this in. And as I feared, what I really don't wanna do is like split the PCB. That would be a huge bummer. What I will do is I will tighten these little nuts up here so that it won't go anywhere. So at least it's steady. Now it's not screwed all the way into the standoffs, but as long as we're careful, I don't think that's going anywhere. What's wrong, bud? You need your truck? Here. <laughs> there you go. No. Alright, so we're going to plug in the um, HDMI to VGA cable. Perfect. I'll go. I'll go. You're going to wrap this up nice and tidy inside here. Yeah. Cool. Hi. If it will. Which I think it will. And if it doesn't, that's what zip ties are for. We're going to plug this in here. And now we have, well, we don't have the power. We need, we need both the power to the uh, Raspberry Pi and the power to the TV set up yet. But... That is looking pretty good. And there we go. Okie dokie. So a haircut and a shirt change later. We have everything set to go. We got a power cord for the TV. We got a power cord for the Raspberry Pi. And we also got a controller. So let me turn this around so that you guys can see and not scratch our table here. So here's the back door. In hindsight, I think I would have made this door either full size or maybe I'll put like a little mesh thing here because this stuff likes to fall out. But you lift up the door and you have your stuff here. Here's your controller. We'll unwrap that right now. Obviously your Raspberry Pi sits right here. That's still a little wobbly. 
Might have to find out how to tighten that down in the future, but here is our power cord for the TV, TV, and our power cord for the Raspberry Pi. So let's flip this around again. Take our power cord out for the TV here. Plug the TV in, take our power cord for the Raspberry Pi, plug the Raspberry Pi in, and there we go, boots right up into RetroPie. I'll have to be honest with you guys. Um, I was given this retro, or I was given this Raspberry Pi with this re with the Retro Pi um, system uh, pre-downloaded onto it, onto the SD that it takes, and um, along with uh, a lot of the uh, game emulators and the um, and the ROMs that came with it. So I couldn't tell you guys how to download those or set that system up. Um, but for the time being, uh, we're just going to look around the ones that um, I got um, preloaded onto the Raspberry Pi. So let's play, oh, um, something else I haven't done yet. The uh, TV here doesn't come with speakers. So currently it doesn't have any sound. I am working on perhaps getting some tiny little speakers that I can just plug into the auxiliary input of the Raspberry Pi in the back and have downward facing speakers that I can fit in the box somewhere um, to have sound come out, but for the time being, uh, it doesn't have any sound. And that's kind of a bummer, but I can at least show you guys, give you guys kind of a showcase how this works. So we can just click on something. Here's Super Mario World. That's loading. In loading. While it's loading, or while it's thinking, or something. I thought about, was thinking for a while, putting the soundproofing panels on the side instead of painting it or something like that. Maybe something like that. All right, so here we have uh, Crash Bandicoot 2, the old Crash Bandicoot, not the new Crash Bandicoot, playing on our Raspberry Pi, sitting in the back of the TV there. Playing on a Nintendo controller. <laughs> We're doing all sorts of weird stuff. Just give you guys a really fast demonstration of how this works. I don't really think the Raspberry Pi gets very hot, so I'm pretty sure I could have closed up the entire back end of the box here and not really had to worry about heat. Because of course the TV doesn't get very hot either. Here we go. Looks pretty good. Running around. Going into Turtle Woods. I don't know why uh, Mario wasn't working for me earlier on. It might have just been an emu emulator issue or something like that. We'll see. But that's, that's pretty much it, guys. Looking good. So now it's a portable game system. It's got the TV inside. It's got the sweet box. It's got the controller that you can wrap up and put inside along with the power cables. Granted, I mean, it, it's, a, it's a system that has, oh, it's a system that has ancient 15, 20 year old games, but it's still a cool project nonetheless. So thanks for hanging out with me guys. I really appreciate it. This was a fun project to show off and just kind of do. If any of you have any questions, um, suggestions, maybe you want me to paint it a certain color or have an idea of how you want me to finish the wood around it or whatnot, let me know in the comments. I'm pretty pretty good about getting back to people. So thanks for hanging out. Pal Bam Zing's channel today, guys. I appreciate it. Have a nice day.